Hi, I'm John Ogilvy. For the last 15 years, I've been working with the Government of Canada to build sophisticated IT systems. In the last few years, that's meant building systems in the cloud. This is a new area for the government, and as I've learned things, I've done some videos to explain to my colleagues what worked and what didn't. So, this series is called Head in the Clouds, and our first topic today is going to be Client Relationship Management, CRM. So, what is CRM? Different definitions, customer relationship management, contact relationship. I like client relationship because the government has lots of clients. Every citizen in Canada, every company, a lot of foreign nationals are clients of the government of Canada from an architect's point of view. What do I mean by that? I mean that these folks need something, a service, money, uh, a permit from the government. How are they going to get that? They're going to provide some information about themselves, enroll themselves. They're going to request a service. They're going to provide some supporting information about their, their need for that service and their eligibility for the service. And they're going to submit their request. It could be something like, I need to renew my passport. I need to prove I'm a citizen. Or else it could be, I'm representing a company and I'd like to build a, uh, a cannabis facility here. Or I'd like to import uh, pesticides into Canada or my personal favorite real world is I'm a courier and I'd like to import live human organs into Canada. These are all requests for client service from the point of view of the government. And what we're going to produce for these folks is a result. And the result could be here is an artifact, here's a permit, here's a license. Go and go about your business. Here's a passport. Here's a grant. I did an analysis for one department. We had 21 new business requests. These are IT systems that we needed to build. And when you look at them, 10 of them were CRM. So that's why our goal is to build an enterprise CRM in the cloud in 2022 so that we can spin up these different business applications really quickly and consistently and securely and that the uh, the secrets to that really is to, is to have a solid architecture. What does that architecture look like? For me, there's four parts to it. The first part is the CRM application itself. Now, this could be a SaaS, software as a service, offering from someone like Salesforce or Microsoft. Dynamics 365 is one that I'm most familiar with. It could be a commercial or open source product that we decide is the best for our needs and we're going to install it into our government cloud tenant and we're going to manage it ourselves. These are all enterprise CRM. So this is an internal facing system. This is for the back office folks who are going to be reviewing applications and generating artifacts and reporting on that. I like to think that the clients are interacting with it by sending in faxes. It just makes it really simple. They aren't because we want to give them a client facing, public facing, internet facing web portal where they can go say, hi, I am John Ogilvy. I would like to apply for the following services. And then I'm going to come back some time later and I'm going to see how are my applications going and what what artifacts have been generated, what licenses are a PDF here available for me to, to download and print. The, uh, the next piece of our solution after the CRM application and the public facing portal is, is the backend database. I like the word dataverse. Microsoft uses it, it's, they didn't invent it. Dataverse is a database plus um, documents and videos and, and email records. It's the whole, the whole thing. It's important that we 
separate the Dataverse from the CRM for a few reasons. One is the government of Canada has a serious information management responsibility. We have specialists whose job is to make sure that we're managing personal information and financial information according to a set of standards. And we make their job easier if we segregate the Dataverse from the CRM application. They don't have to go into our application to see the data. The data has its own life in the cloud. The cloud makes this really easy. And the next thing that's fun is that once this data has its own life in the cloud, we can start to aim various reporting and visualization and analytics tools at that data. And we can really come up with some insights as to how our program is running. In the past, we would have had to code these up as reports within our CRM application. Now we can use tools like Cognos or Power BI, and I'm, I'm sure there are many others, and Databricks you know, to, to really crunch these numbers, come up with some, some wisdom. And the, the, the final piece of this uh, architecture uh, is the integrations. Having reached a decision about granting the service or delivering the service, we probably need to coordinate with the government's financial systems like SAP. And maybe we want to capture the contracts, that we've, the artifacts in a GC docs, our, our enterprise document management system. There's, there might be some specific bit line of business systems that we need to pull data from or put data into. Going from the cloud back to on-premises government systems is called the cloud. Well, it's called the cloud-to-ground problem in industry as well, and it's a separate subject. So, every one of these topics—the CRM, the portal, the dataverse, and the uh, uh, integrations—is the subject of its own playbook, and hopefully, eventually, the subject of its own video. So as an architect, you have to segregate these and tackle these problems separately. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? These uh, playbooks are available to government staff on the uh, GC Exchange platform. They're typically uh, titled App Treasury Board, App Mod, Playbook, CRM, Data Management, Data Visualization, Cloud to Ground. So I can help you find those if you need them. Now, we built this beautiful system with all these moving parts. What are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to recruit some specialists to maintain it. We're going to uh, go nuts in terms of reporting and visualization. And we're going to really make our information management people happy because they can see all the information in one nice pile coming from all the applications. The business users, we're going to make them happy by saying, tell me what it is that your program does and who it serves. And we're going to help you customize the CRM application, the CRM uh, solutions so that it meets your needs. We're going to create some custom user input forms to capture the data that your program needs. We're going to store that data in some custom data structures in the Dataverse. You can have it organized any way you like. It might be interesting if your data could be shared with other programs because you might be serving the same people. The third thing is that we're going to let our uh, data analysis and visualization gurus go, go wild with this data. <clears throat> and finally, we're going to integrate with our existing government systems in a very uh, secure way. Each of these applications can then be spun up. These, these CRM applications or line of business solutions can be spun up really quickly because all of the foundational work has already been done. And we're just looking at what makes you different, what makes your pesticide program different from his cannabis program. Okay. So that's my experience, my insight on, on CRM. I'm always happy. Uh, my mother is Irish, always happy to talk to people about this. I'm John Ogilvie, and I, I have my head in the clouds.